Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. That's because I look at the human body as a healing and regenerating system designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. That's 866-735-2470 for the phone number. The phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team, 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. We've got blog posts and news stories up at all our websites, and we have a search engine up at brightsideben.com. If you miss a program, you can head over to uh, brightsideben.com and search for particular subjects or programs. If you have a client or a patient or a friend or family member who you want to refer to any programs, just punch in whatever program or topic you want into the search engine at brightsideben.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with copious, generous, large amounts of premium fat-soluble vitamin C. Our retinol 5% gel has got the most retinol you're going to find in any over-the-counter product and never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, silicon, water, wax, emulsifier in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're going to spend a little time talking about estrogen as it relates to connective tissue, which has been our subject for the last few months, the last probably five or six months, and for good reason. The body's made up of 25% or so, 25 to 30% connective tissue, and there is no such thing as a chronic, long-term, progressive, degenerative health challenge, which affects, uh, which is 80% of our health challenges. There's no such thing as a chronic, long-term health challenge, and that includes cancer, and that includes heart disease, that includes skin problems, that includes bone problems, that includes everything that in the way of chronic, long-term, progressive, degenerative diseases that does not involve the connective tissue. The connective tissue feeds all the cells of the body. We always talk about how all disease is cell disease and all cell disease is starvation, suffocation, and toxification. It is the connective tissue that feeds the cells. It is the connective tissue that breathes the cells. And it is the connective tissue that detoxifies the cells. So we have been spending a lot of time. I know we have beat this subject. Uh, I don't think we beat it into the ground because there's a lot more to talk about, but we've been talking about it for a while and for good reason. Every single health challenge you can name involves the connective tissue. So we're going to spend a little time talking about estrogen, which is a connective tissue building substance. It's not just a sex hormone. It's involved in growth. It's involved in repair. It's also involved in in male health. We think of it as a female sex hormone, but estrogen is a male hormone also. Certainly men don't make as much estrogen as women, but there are a lot of health challenges that men deal with that involve estrogen. Estrogen is much more than a sex hormone, much more than a reproduction hormone. Yes, it's true. Estrogen is the estrus hormone. It's the hormone of fertility. 
and it's involved in the development of the embryo, and it's involved, involved in the uh, development of the fetus in the womb. And yes, it's true that female sex characteristics, breast development, genital development, menstruation are partially at least regulated by estrogen, but estrogen is involved in way more than sexuality. For one thing, it plays an important role in the immune system and the inflammatory system. Another thing estrogen is involved in is the nervous system. The brain is actually a source of estrogen and brain cells can make their own estrogen. We always talk about how the uh, uterus, the adrenals, the female reproductive system make estrogen. Well, the brain makes estrogen too. The brain will convert cholesterol into estrogen. The brain actually makes its, um, will make estrogen from testosterone too. By the way, this conversion of male hormone to female hormone plays a very important role in health. Testosterone is converted into estrogen, and this is really important for guys. If you've ever heard of something called aromatase, you know what I'm talking about. Aromatase is an enzyme that facilitates the production of estrogen from testosterone. This is why women who have elevated levels of estrogen, which are associated with cancer, especially breast cancer, this is why women will take, if they've been diagnosed with breast cancer or as a preventative for breast cancer, will take drugs like Arimidex or Aromacin and Femera. These are uh, aromatase inhibitor medications that lower estrogen levels by blocking the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. These types of drugs are considered to be high tech and recent, advantage, uh, recent advances for the treatment of estrogen-dependent breast cancer, which, by the way, 185,000 women get diagnosed with breast cancer every year. In large measure, these aromatase inhibitor drugs have replaced the former drug that was used for, uh, for estrogen-dependent breast cancer, tamoxifen. And now, aromatase, inhibitor, aromatase inhibitors, or AI drugs, are the first line of therapy. And they're the first line of preventive therapy for women at, at risk for breast cancer. Even though, like all drugs, AIs are not benign. There are no benign drugs. There are no drugs that don't have a side effect profile. And if you are taking a drug as a preventative, you might want to think again. And if your doctor is giving you a pharmaceutical drug as a preventative, he may want to think again. There are, are no prescription drugs that do not have their own side effect profile, and AIs, aromatase inhibitor drugs, are no different. They can cause hot flashes, vaginal dryness, loss of sex drive, fatigue, joint pain, joint stiffness, loss of bone mineral density, increased risk of bone fracture. And this is the problem when you start interfering with the body's hormonal system. Now, I'm not saying that there are not times that you may need to take a prescription drug. I understand this, but you're playing with fire, especially if you monkey with the, drug, with the body's hormone system, either by taking hormones, by taking so-called hormone replacement therapy or so-called bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which, as we said before, is not bioidentical at all. Or if you take a drug that blocks hormones, like aromatase inhibitor type drugs. Now, if you don't want to go the drug route, if you don't want to go the pharmacological route to lower your aromatase, to lower your estrogen, there are non-pharmacological supplements that you can use as aromatase inhibitors. And these kinds of supplements have been used in the bodybuilding world for decades. Bodybuilders are obsessed with aromatase inhib inhibitors because, remember, aromatase is turning male hormone into female hormone. This is especially true for athletes and bodybuilders who are actually injecting testosterone, injecting or, or uh, testosterone analogs for muscle development. You may have heard that sometimes guys who are injecting testosterone will end up with feminization as that testosterone, the, the high levels of testosterone, get converted into estrogen because of the hormone or because of the enzyme aromatase. That's why they will take aromatase inhibitors. And if you look through Muscle and Fitness or any of these bodybuilding magazines that you get at the supermarket, you'll find all kinds of supplements that purport to lower aromatase. So aromatase inhibition is not just a pharmacological intervention for folks dealing, for women dealing with breast cancer cancer or for men who have prostate issues. We're going to talk about prostate cancer and estrogen here in a little bit. But aromatase inhibitors can also be effective, at least natural aromatase inhibitors may be effective, I should say, for bodybuilders and athletes who want to boost their testosterone levels and lower estrogen. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright 
side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844 236 6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, something you may have heard about, read about, or if you just have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing success stories. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, including our Beyond Tangy Tangerine or Healthy Start Pack, Ultimate EFAs, or any of the fine longevity products formulated by Dr. Wallach and Richard Renton, Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can start your own business. Call 866-735-2470 if you want to speak to a real live person, or you can sign up right off the website. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, truth retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with acne blemishes or hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or you want to prevent thinning skin or prevent wrinkles or fine lines or even reverse wrinkles and fine lines, retinol and retinoic acid are the only active ingredients approved by the FDA. Retinoic acid in particular is the only FDA approved ingredient for literally reversing fine lines and wrinkles and I've been using retinol in my pharmacy practice as a compounding pharmacy for over 30 years and I've been formulating with it in over-the-counter products now with our truth treatment products for now three or four years uh, I've gotten all kinds of letters and all kinds of feedback, all kinds of positive feedback on our retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with accelerated aging or want to prevent it, check out our Truth Retinol 5% gel at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about estrogen and aromatase, the enzyme that converts female hormone into male hormone. It's used medically and pharmacologically. It's considered to be the, the highest tech version of breast cancer drugs. Reading from uh, the German Institute for Quality and Efficiency in Healthcare, aromatase inhibitors for breast cancer advantages over tamoxifen in early stage disease. The data available, according to this article, the data available show advantages over tamoxifen for early breast cancer, not necessarily for later breast cancer, and it's actually used. Aromatase inhibitors are actually used now as preventatives for breast cancer. I am not a big believer in using prescription drugs for prevention. You'll have to make your own decision about that, but. Uh, keep in mind, aromatase inhibitors come with their own side effect profile. Estrogen is important stuff. You know, we beat up on estrogen. I've been, I'm guilty of beating up on estrogen, but it's important stuff. And you play with these kinds of hormones, whether you're boosting hormone levels with hormone replacement or you're suppressing hormone levels with aromatase inhibitors, you play with these kinds of strategies at your own peril, at your own potential risk. You can't mess with your hormones. Nutrition works with hormones. Nutrition helps boost hormones naturally. Nutrition helps suppress hormones naturally. But if you start, if you go directly to the hormone levels, that's where you run into toxicity and that's where you run into side effects. If you want to go with aromatase inhibition, if you're dealing with prostate issues, if you want to prevent breast cancer, if you're a bodybuilder or an athlete, or if you are getting older and you want to make sure your, your testosterone levels are staying where they need to be, you can use non-pharmacological, non-drug aromatase inhibition. And these kinds of products and these kinds of, these kinds of supplements, aromatase inhibitors, non-drug aromatase inhibitors, have been used in the bodybuilding world for decades. You can't pick up a bodybuilding magazine or a weightlifting magazine without reading an advertisement for some kind of aromatase inhibitors, aromatase inhibitor. Aromatase inhibitors, by blocking the production of estrogen from testosterone, keep your testosterone high. And you don't need a drug. You can use green tea, catechins, C-A-T-E-C-H-I-N-S. Catechins, which are found in green tea, are natural aromatase inhibitors. Grapes can be a natural aromatase inhibitor. Same with wine. Resveratrol can have, uh, which is found in grape skins, can have, and wine for that matter, can have uh, uh, anti-estrogen aromatase inhibition effects. Mushrooms can have aromatase inhibition effects. Citrus and the flavonoids, particularly the flavonoids that are found in citrus, can have aromatase inhibition effects. In fact, flavonoids are 
aromatase inhibitors. Pretty much all flavonoids have aromatase inhibition properties. If you go to my website, brightsidehealth.com, you'll find a product called Bergamax. Bergamax is made with bergamot, and it's got all kinds of health benefits because of the flavonoids. And one of the major health benefits of, the, of our Bergamax, which contains bergamot flavonoids, is aromatase inhibition. For many years, soy isoflavones, which are a type of flavonoid, have been used as estrogen modifiers and aromatase inhibitors. You may have heard of something called genistin or diazidin. Almost all female health supplements will contain these two very important aromatase inhib inhib inhibiting flavonoids. Diazidin is spelled D-A-I-Z-I-D-I-N. Diazidin and genistin, G-E-N-I-S-T-E-I-N. These are the most, I would say, they're probably the most important and most popular anyway of the phyto plant nutrients that are used for aromatase inhibition and estrogen modification. A friend of mine, or acquaintance of mine anyway, was from Boulder, came up with a, uh, an extract from cruciferous vegetables called DIM, diindolyl methane. DIM is found in broccoli and cauliflower and, and cabbage and other cruciferous vegetables naturally. Well, what my, um, my acquaintance will say, he's an anesthesiologist who lives here in Boulder, uh, what he did is he extracted one of the active ingredients in, in the cruciferous vegetables called DIM. He just, he just started, he patented it and he just started selling it. And I remember, oh gosh, now maybe about 20 years ago, he brought a bunch of it to my lab and I started working with it for topical products. I started taking it myself. At the time I was in my 30s, so I didn't really have an issue with testosterone or estrogen, but I started taking it and playing with it. And now you can buy it at health food stores called DIM, another similar, similar to DIM uh, uh, supplement that you can use for aromatase inhibition is called I3C. DIM, I3C, and cruciferous vegetables themselves. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. These are wonderful ways to stabilize your hormones, to keep your estrogen levels where they need to be, and also to prevent excessive production of estrogen from testosterone via aromatase inhibition properties. Another uh, interesting herbal material called chrysin, it's actually a flavonoid that's found in passion flower, has been used by bodybuilders to keep their testosterone levels high and to pre uh, prevent or slow down the production of estrogen from testosterone. Another herb called tribulus, T-R-I-B-U-L-U-S, -R -R tribulus, which also goes by the name devil's weed. So in addition to lowering estrogen levels, if you're dealing with estrogen-dependent cancer or for men who are worried about prostate cancer, AIs also, uh, that is aromatase inhibitors, also boost testosterone levels. And if, you, uh, if you're a guy and you find yourself gaining weight as you get older, if you're losing your masculine edge, if, you've having, if you're having a hard time developing muscle, if you're having a hard time sexually, if you're having a hard time psychologically, a lot of times when men stop producing estrogen or they're or sorry, stop producing testosterone, or they experience testosterone resistance, which can occur with too much sugar or too high levels of insulin, sometimes you lose that psychological edge. If you're losing that psychological male edge that you had when you were a kid, these kinds of aromatase inhibition strategies may be something that you want to think about. And as I said, because estrogen is involved in prostate cancer, if you are dealing with BPH or, or any kind of prostate issues, these are also strategies that you might want to think about. And by the way, there's also nutrition supplements that you can use. In fact, one mineral in particular plays a very important role and has AI benefits as well. back on the bright side. Got a couple lines open at 844-236-6010. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Also, you can purchase Longevity products off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team, 866-735-2470. You order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and start your own business. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about 
estrogen and aromatase inhibition. I want to tell you about a mineral that you can use. In fact, a mineral everybody should use for dealing with estrogen or dealing with hormone problems or dealing with skin problems or dealing with immune problems. Just a hormone everybody needs, including kids. I'm sorry, a, a mineral everybody needs, including kids. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about estrogen and xenoestrogens, which are foreign estrogens, fake estrogens, as well as aromatase inhibition tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, a couple of, we'll get your calls here in just a second if you're on hold. A couple stories I want to read for you here. This is from the Imperial College of London and the European Institute of Oncology in Milan, Italy. Breast cancer drugs stop working when tumors make their own fuel. I find this extremely fascinating. Apparently, there are drugs, including tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors, that stop working according to this study, this article, in around one in three patients. Scientists, quote, scientists assumed the tumors developed resistance in some way, but didn't know how, unquote. However, in this latest study, what they found is tumors make their own aromatase. Tumors increase the production of aromatase. How do you like that? So you take your drugs, you take your aromatase inhibitors, the tumor's like, I don't care, we're going to make our own aromatase. This is so important, and I find this so fascinating, because you see... We are obsessed with killing cancer, and maybe there are times you need to kill cancer or remove cancer, but the problem with killing cancer as a health strategy or removing tumors as a health strategy is cancer comes back. The problem with using pharmacology to defeat cancer is cancer, cancer cells have their own mechanisms for defeating the pharmacology. The way you want to deal with cancer is to prevent the formation of cancer or reduce the likelihood or eliminate it by changing the environment that the cancer cells are living in. The reason why cancer comes back and the reasons why tumors develop resistance is because the environment that they thrive in has not been changed. And, and I can't blame the doctors, <clears throat> excuse me, you can't blame the medical model. That's not their job to change the environment that the cancer cells live in. Their job is to take care of the problem immediately. And they do a good job. And I don't want to be the guy beating up the medical model for doing what they're supposed to be doing. If you got cancer, you need to take it out, obviously. But what we should be doing is working with the environment that the cancer cells are living in. Cancer is smarter than your doctor. Cancer is smarter than us. Cancer cells have a way of uh, adjusting. They develop resistance to drugs. They, develop an, they have a way of adjusting to medical strategies and simply removing a tumor and simply removing a cancer cell or killing it with some kind of fancy schmancy new age high tech strategy, even alternatives. I got a lot of friends in the cancer business, I don't like calling it that, but who help folks dealing with cancer and they like CBD and they like herbal remedies and they like Essiac formula and Hoxie formula and that's great. But the problem with these kinds of strategies is they're just alternative chemotherapy. They're not taking care of the problem. The problem is in the environment that's filled with toxicity, that is, is uh, uh, suffering from hypoxia or lack of oxygen, and that is nutritionally deficient. Guess what? That's the same thing that causes all health issues. All disease is cell disease, and obviously that includes cancer. Nobody has breast cancer. They have breast cell cancer. Nobody has prostate cancer. We have prostate cell cancer. Nobody has lung cancer. Nobody has bone cancer. Nobody has liver cancer. We've got lung cell cancer, bone cell cancer, liver cell cancer. It's a cellular issue like all diseases. And there's only three things that cause a cell to be sick. There's only three things that cause a cell to become cancerous. Toxicity, and that includes sugar, hypoxia or low levels of oxygen and nutritional deficiencies. This all leads to an inflammatory response and this is how disease shows up. So to all my friends who are promoting herbal strategies and non-pharmacological medical, non-pharmacological alternative strategies for dealing with cancer, in my opinion, they'd be better off telling people how to clean up their act how to clean up their blood act, how to clean up the blood, because it really is all about the blood. Using nutrition, making sure you're breathing correctly, making sure you're moving your body, which is of course also important for oxygenation, and of course not mucking up the works, especially with sugar. 
All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Robin in Oklahoma. Good morning, Robin. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Uh, ben, I'm at kind of at a crisis right now. Okay. I am uh, 57 and having terrible panic anxiety. Okay. And um, I'm doing the bioidentical hormones, and I know you don't like them, and I'm thinking... That could be I contributing to your anxiety, by the way. I, Astro I, I, Astro I, I, are you noticing it? Are you noticing that after you use your hormones or, or your anxiety gets worse? I can't really tell. Um, what kind, I, is it cream or is it or are they well, pills or? She's got me on a trochee of uh, two estrogens. She said I was too high in one estrogen, and DHEA and testosterone, and then a cream for the progesterone. You're a you're you you are a pharmaceutical cocktail, my dear, and I oh, hate I, that. I, I hate feel, that. Well, I, I I can't even tell you um, the thoughts that I've been having. I feel well, like my body needs a I don't know what I need. My acupuncturist. One acupuncturist says, don't do the protein, and I have the One World Way protein because it can lead to panic attacks. Your One acupuncturist is a bonehead. Quote me on that. Okay. okay so let me, let me, and you tell him I said that. Uh, let me, and I'm, I'm sorry. I, I get, I, sometimes I, I get mean. I, I didn't mean I also, that. I take that I, back. That's okay. I also know I'm actually not listening, so okay. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm concerned about myself, not him. All right, let's, um, let's figure this out, my dear. Let and, me figure and, and also, may I say this? Um, I really, um, I feel like the adrenals are pretty, uh, pretty Shot. close to, to being gone. Yeah, that, of course they are. So here's the deal, okay? When you're uh, going through menopause, your adrenal glands are going to pick up the slack for hormone production. You probably heard me say this before. Hormones, the, the two major centers of hormone production in the body are the adrenal glands and the fem or female hormones, or the adrenal glands and the female reproductive system. I did say earlier that you're making estrogen in your brain, and there's other systems that are making estrogen too. But primarily, it's an uh, a, 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 they're made in the ovaries, the female reproductive system, and the adrenals. However, after menopause, that shifts into a, the adrenal glands. So when you're younger, you're making female hormones in your female reproductive system. When you get uh, postmenopausal or perimenopausal even, you are making it in your adrenal glands. However, if your body is under duress, now it's trying to do two things. Now your adrenals are trying to make estrogen and they're trying to make cortisol. And of course, it's going to cause a, a burden on your stress system, which is what the adrenal glands regulate. Now, there's a couple other things I want to tell you about. One very important uh, 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 stimulus for anxiety is how the body is being held muscularly, how you're holding your body from a musculoskeletal perspective. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got a uh, line open for you. Let's talk, we're talking to Robin here in Oklahoma. Hey, Robin. Yeah. Okay, got a bunch of, I got a bunch of calls. So I'm going to get to this. Uh, I'm going to tell you about anxiety here real quickly, all right? Something very interesting about anxiety is even though we perceive it as a brain issue, it is really in many ways a body issue. And what I mean by that is when our body is in a certain posture, our muscles are being held in a certain way, oxygen levels or breathing uh, is, being, is being done in a certain fashion, the brain will read the blood blood and the brain will read the musculature. So what happens is, is we contract our muscles, the brain sees, reads the muscle contraction and says, oh, there must be something happening. And then we make up a story around that and that story involves anxiety, it involves nervousness, it involves some kind of survival threat. So simply by relaxing the musculature, either through massage or progressive muscle relaxation or using hot water or, or a hot bath, simply by relaxing the musculature, you can lower anxiety levels. Now, this isn't going to take care of the problem because you, you can't stay in the bath. You know, you can't constantly have your muscles relaxed because you got to move around, but it will take care of the problem in the short run. Deep breathing works the same way. So when you're experiencing a panic attack, or and by the way, when you're experiencing your panic attack, you'll notice that you stop breathing right before you get the panic attack. So when you're experiencing your anxiety or your panic attack, or however you want to describe it, immediately start slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. All three of those 
aspects are important because if you go fast or you go out of rhythm or you don't do it deeply, you're actually going to cause more anxiety. So breathing slowly in through the nose and out through the nose, exhaling more than you're inhaling, going in a rhythm and going as deep as you can into the bottom of your belly or even into the bottom of your feet if you can figure out how to breathe all the way down into your into your uh, the lower part of your body can make a huge difference. Uh, same with hot water, baths or, or hot showers can work as well. I understand. Uh, here, okay, my so, next, my fun, well, my hang fun. on, I got a few more things for you. I got a few more okay. things. Oh. In addition to reading the musculature, and in addition to reading the blood for oxygen levels, the brain is also reading sugar levels. And elevated sugar can cause issues with anxiety. So making sure you're keeping your sugar intake down, best way to do that is by increasing your protein and increasing your fat. Be careful with the protein because protein can get turned into sugar. So ketogenic diet is probably the best way to do it if you want to really go all out. Using nutrients that help the body balance out excess excess estrogen can also be helpful. The aromatase inhibitors that we just talked about might be helpful for you. Tomorrow we're going to talk about a couple minerals, like uh, I'll tell you what they are, zinc and boron, both of which might be helpful for you. And also vitamin A and E, which can help balance out estrogen as well as balancing out stress hormone can be strategies for you as well. Uh, there's a couple more things. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, bombard you with stuff, but a very, very important strategy, you want to tell this to your doctor who prescribed you the estrogen, is you got to be clearing out the estrogen. If you're just taking estrogen, but your body is not clearing out the estrogen, you are playing with fire. And in my opinion, for a medical professional to dispense estrogen to a patient without checking on estrogen clearance is maximally irresponsible. You need to be clearing out that estrogen because if you're not, and now you're taking excess estrogen, it's just, it, number one, it's going to build up. And number two, it's going to turn in what we call, what we've been calling uh, catechol estrogens, which are toxic breakdown products of estrogen. So if you have any digestive health issues, which you almost certainly do, okay, okay and now they pile on estrogen, you're playing with major fire. So what you want to do is you want to support digestive health with and by the way, by just simply supporting digestive health, you may be able to get yourself off the estrogen entirely, but certainly while you're on your hormone replacement, make sure you're using uh, your nightly essence probiotics, your ultimate nightly essence probiotics, eating fermented foods, using cruciferous vegetables, making sure you're using digestive enzymes, especially bile salts. In fact, I'd be taking extra bile salts. Remember, estrogen is cleared out with bile. And then I would also be using fiber, ground up flax seeds every day, and I would also be using bentonite clay every day every day, go get yourself some bentonite clay powder and do half a teaspoonful or even a teaspoonful in water and drink it down every day. And these, these will all help you clear out the estrogen. Are, and there's tons more. Tons are more strategies. To, are you telling me to not do the bioidenticals? No, I'm not. I would never tell you that's none of my business. That's between you and your doctor. However, I would tell you that it's very irresponsible for a doctor, and you can tell the doctor I said this, very irresponsible for her to put you on hormone replacement therapy without checking to see how well you're clearing and breaking down your estrogen. Does that make sense? Is that liver? It's the liver and the intestines, yes. Okay, all right. And also right. the stomach to a certain extent. And don't forget your ultimate EFAs, which are incredibly valuable for helping deal with all estrogen issues. Listen up tomorrow. We'll talk about some nutrients that you could use for helping support estrogen metabolism. And I'm sorry that I was mean to your doctor and your acupuncturist. No, I, I, I don't about remember that. even what you said. <laughs> okay, good. It's Thank you so much, Thank Robin. You, okay, take care. All right. Let's move on to Tony in Santa Cruz. Been holding on for a long time. Good morning, Tony. Yes, good morning. I'm going to re reduce my three issues. That, I know you're coming to Santa Cruz, so I'm going to reduce my three issues to one. I'm trying to uh, drink more raw eggs, and I understand you have to take biotin to do the proper digestion. Mm. That's the only thing that. Yeah, it's that's that's kind of a, silly, but yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, raw eggs contain a substance that will tie up biotin. Just make sure you're getting plenty of B vitamins. You don't necessarily have to worry about that. But make sure you're getting your okay. B vitamins. That's important. I'll see you and, when you're here. You know when you're going to get here? I'll be there Friday. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Okay, take care, Tony. All right, let's go on to Paula in Florida. Good morning, Paula. How you doing? Hey, Ben. Hey, what's up? With, well, I'm here with my 83 year old mother. No, hi, uh, um, what's your mom's name? What's your mom's name? Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. <laughs> what's going on? She's had um, heart palpitations for several years, mostly at oh, night, and then recently she had an atrial fibrillation episode that she had to be taken to the hospital, and she is on meds for it. What but meds? That's only for about a week. What, what meds? What meds? Uh, the um, so long. What is it? Propranolol. Propranolol. 
No, it's S O T A L O L. Okay. And um, she's also had um, a blood clot in her lungs last year, and so she's on a blood thinner for that. And then oh my she goodness. did have colon cancer, I know. She had colon cancer in 98, where they resected just a small portion of her colon. But right now, she's having severe diarrhea. It's been for six weeks. Well, yeah. Her body's trying to get rid of all those drugs. Diarrhea is one of the ways the body eliminates toxins. So drugs can cause diarrhea. Caffeine can cause diarrhea. Anything you put in your system that your system's trying to get rid of, diarrhea is one of the ways it gets rid of it. It's like, you know, reverse vomiting or vomiting from the other end, basically, is what diarrhea is. So, yes, that makes perfect sense. Problem with the diarrhea is now she's going to be losing her electrolytes and her B vitamins, which are going to make her heart problems worse. And, of course, then they'll give you more drugs for that. So, a couple things. First of all, at 83, more than likely your sugar, your sugar uh, processing is being thrown. You're not processing sugar correctly. I would go on an immediate diabetic diet immediate low sugar okay. diet. Uh, and increasing your protein is an easy way to do that. Get a supplement called glutamine powder, G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, glutamine powder. Okay. Do a, a half a teaspoonful every day. Get on the healthy start pack. Make sure you're sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. You want B vitamins all day, and I would be doing extra, vi and you'll get vitamin C in the Beyond Tangy, but I would take extra vitamin C. Uh, maybe a, another a couple thousand milligrams extra. Be careful, because it can cause some diarrhea itself if you take too much. So don't take too much all at once. Make sure she's using 100 milligrams a day, actually even 200 milligrams a day of coenzyme Q10. Make sure she's using magnesium every day, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of magnesium every day. You'll get that in the osteomag, but you've got to be careful with magnesium too because that can cause a little bit of di diarrhea or cramping if you take too much. So do it slowly. And then also, mm -hmm. uh, if I were you, I'd be also using flaxseed fiber and bentonite clay to help clear out those drugs as much as possible. Chances are very good at the age of 83 that you're not clearing out the drugs very effectively, and that can cause accumulation of pharmaceuticals, and that can cause toxicity. So using bentonite yeah. clay every day, a quarter tea, a half a teaspoonful to a teaspoonful of bentonite clay, that will also help you a little bit with the diarrhea, help mop up some of that extra excess moisture. But the problem with the diarrhea is it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's your way your body's trying to eliminate those toxins. Make sure you're using probiotics. If you're having uh, uh, diarrhea, your chances are good that you're losing bacteria out of the gut, and that can mess up your digestive system and cause toxicity. Uh, I, I haven't talked about selenium. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. But selenium might also help you. Uh, very, very important for the heart. Uh, also important for the brain, important for the immune system. 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium a day. And then uh, along with all the diabetic strategies that we talked about, make sure she's using her anti-diabetic or blood sugar metabolizing nutrients, chromium, vanadium. You'll find those in the sweeties. Get on the ultimate niacin, wonderful for the heart and also important for sugar control. And uh, as I said earlier, make sure, uh, if I were you, I'd be going keto, using the ketogenic diet to help lower my sugar levels. I'm just out of time. Hi, ma'am. I'm sorry, Paul and Barbara. God bless you both. Right. Hope I helped you out, and I hope we helped all you guys out, even if you haven't called. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream at truthtreatments.com. And call The Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 and start yourself the longevity business and help change the world with nutritional supplementation. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.